All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to square one. It doesn't feel good here. I uh, just came upstairs. Game ended right before I came up. And, uh, yeah. Welcome back. We are back to where we were before the season started, I think, in many ways. I may be back to where we were even after the first few games of the year. But it's a long way away from where we were a month, a month and a half ago. And, uh... After an extended period of time where it looked like we were further along than people expected and we were really close to having a great team and things were trending in the right direction and it was time to kind of turn the page on some of the stuff. No, no, we're turning uh, we're turning the page right back. So, um, yeah, 34 to I'm sorry, 30 to 24 Panthers. And honestly, one of those touchdowns was in pseudo garbage time. So you could really call it. 30 to 17 and I I wouldn't object to it and <clears throat> there was a uh, there was definitely an opportunity to make this game something special and the team simply did not execute at the end and there are going to be some people who did not perform today that you know I'll, I'll point it out of course I'll, I'll criticize where it needs where where criticism needs to be levied but there are definitely going to be some people I'm going to take it a little easy on in this video compared to their performance today. But um, there are some people associated with this team right now that just... Uh, it's uh, time for a little bit of a reckoning here because I feel like we got tricked. I really feel like, well, at least I, I got tricked. I thought we had turned the corner. I thought we were starting to figure things out, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. And not even close. We, we've regressed so far back, not, not, not till earlier this year or last year or the year before, really. On, on the defensive side of the ball, it feels like we've regressed way back to like before Carroll even got here. This is like the kind of defense you would have seen when Jim Mora was here. So that, that, I think that's the main thing right now. I, I feel like I got tricked and it, it doesn't feel good. Like, there was a way you could have lost this game where, yeah, it sucks to lose, but you wouldn't have this feeling. You wouldn't feel like you, you got tricked. You wouldn't feel like Pete Carroll and Clint Hurt and Sean Desai, and to a certain extent, I guess, Shane Waldron tricked you. I'm, I'm only levying so much blame that way, but regardless, like, you, you felt like you had something. It felt like things were turning the corner. And then it goes all the way back, and here you are at the end of the year, and you feel like you haven't moved that far from where you were before. So uh, starting with the offense, because that's the side of the ball where there are some positives to glean. I, um, I will say, I think our receivers played really well in this game overall. There were some struggles, especially early to get open. But at the end of the day, all three of your main receivers had five catches. And a touchdown each. I know DK had that drop, but he made up for it. He made some good plays. Lockett, brilliant catch in the back of the end zone. I thought Goodwin. Goodwin might have been our best player today, honestly. Goodwin played an amazing game in my book. I was very impressed. So that stuff was great. I thought our tackles, Cross and Lucas, for the most part, played a great game. Very impressed with them. And Look, that's more important than a lot of this other stuff, right? Because those are the guys who are going to have to be the rock for this team for the next several years. So that stuff was good. Um, I thought the play calling and the way the offense was run in general was okay. It, it's a rough situation. It is. You're put in a bad spot with no real running backs. And you, you work with it the best that you can. And it went okay. I can't get terribly upset at anything I saw out there because... At the end of the day, you were working behind the eight ball, and you found a way to at least put up enough points to give yourself a chance to win. That being said, the interior of the offensive line continues to be very, I don't know. I don't know what you call it at this point. Do you even call it inconsistent? I made a video a couple weeks ago talking up Damian Lewis. Feels like he's regressed heavily the last couple weeks. Still don't really know what we're doing at right guard. Austin Blythe has kind of turned into a complete train wreck. Like, that's not why we lost today, don't get me wrong, but I still don't know what's going on in there. 
Very little tight end production today. I think we had three total catches, including zero for Noah Fant. Noah Fant had strung together a few really nice games, and today, invisible. I know he's out there, but I can't prove it. It's really hard for me to prove it using the box score. Uh, th there were some definite good things on that side of the ball, but yeah, okay, We I guess we got to do it. We got to talk about Geno, and... Look, that was probably the worst game that Geno played all year. Um, he, he, he at least made a few plays. He put together a few drives to put up enough points to give us a chance. But at the end of the day, you've got turnovers. You missed a lot of throws. Took some sacks you didn't need to take. Just didn't look completely comfortable. Yeah, it was a pretty bad game for Geno. I admit that. He was a big part of this loss. But that's, that's really all I'm going to say in the negative. When it comes to Gino, that is, I mean. Because I'm, I'm not interested in killing him right now. I'm just not. I know some people will, and I get it. But for me, I'm, I'm going to stick to what I've been saying all year. This is a quarterback making backup money. He should not be the one who has to be perfect for us to win. And today was a day where you look at the way the defense was playing. You look at the way our running game was non-existent. You kind of needed Gino to be perfect to win, and that sucks. Of course, I wanted him to be A-plus today. We needed A-plus Geno to win this game. He needed to be on point for us to overcome everything else. And he couldn't do it. He didn't do it. I get that. He might be working through some injuries of his own on his throwing arm, by the way. That's a <clears throat> realistic possibility that um, he, he might be working through some stuff physically. I don't want to completely rule that out. But I, uh, I do want to say that he, the, this should not be the position that Geno Smith is in. This isn't. This was not the plan. The plan was let Geno be in a position where he doesn't have to mess things up, where he just has to not mess things up. Let him avoid turnovers, be careful, and win the game that way. And that's not the position we're in right now. That's not really Geno's fault. So I'm not going to go after him too hard. I know some people will. That's cool. He, he did play a bad game. Multiple turnovers, although I will say the second interception was a bunch of crap. He thought he had a free play and should have. But even with that, there were several throws in this game that were interception worthy that just didn't get intercepted. And to be perfectly honest, he's had a lot of those lately. It's starting to become a problem. He needs to pull it back a little bit. But <clears throat> given the situation, I can't get mad at him for taking risks. If you're Geno Smith, you know you have... No running game. Your defense is getting gashed. They can't stop the Panthers running the same play over and over and over again. If you're Geno, you're thinking, I got to try to fit this ball into a tight window and take a risk every now and then. I, I got a coach that refuses to go for it on fourth down when everyone in the world goes for it on, the for on fourth down there. If I have a chance to make a play, I don't care if it could easily go bad. I got to go for it. So, <clears throat> yeah, Geno played his worst game of the year. I'm, I'm just going to... Say what I usually say here. Everyone's entitled to a bad game, especially Gino. Gino is making $7 million to play better than quarterbacks that are making five, six, seven times that this year. A lot better. And at the end of the day, this was not the bargain that you were supposed to have with Gino. So not killing him, not going to kill Waldron. When at the end of the day, when you don't have a running game, it's hard to come up with things that work and we came up with stuff that worked well enough to give us a chance to win, if only for the defense. So, yeah, that's the side of the ball where I got nothing. Well, okay, let me take that back. Bruce Irvin played all right. I thought Daryl Taylor. I mean, Daryl Taylor made a couple of really nice plays early. So, I guess I can say that. That's about it. So... I want to be fair. I want to try to be fair here. I, I, I like to make sure that when I go after coaches, it's not just out of pure anger. I like to try to come from a more rational place. Before this game kicks off, you get the word that Shelby Harris is a surprise scratch. And it's like, oh, oh no. And then in the second quarter, Al Woods gets hurt and doesn't come back. So those are your two best defensive linemen. And I completely understand that when you lose your two best defensive linemen, you uh, 
you got problems. You are going to have a harder time stopping the run. You're going to have a harder time getting any push up the middle. So when I see the Seahawks take the field with no Woods and, and no Harris, and the Panthers are just running the ball, running the ball, <coughs> I'm not shocked that it's working basically every single snap. I'm not shocked we can't get off the field. Um, in that second half, basically, the only time we got off the field was uh, when Carolina got first and goal from the three and decided to pass four times in a row, which thank you, whoever decided to do that. You made this game way more interesting than it needed to be. But uh, yeah, I get that. I completely understand that. But I am going to say what needs to be said here. You still got Ryan Monet, who you extended in the offseason. You gave him $12 million. Not that he's going to see most of it. You got Quentin Jefferson, who you signed as a free agent in the offseason. You got Puna Ford, who you gave money to a couple offseasons ago. You even got LJ Collier. Yeah, I know it's LJ Collier, but you spent a first round pick on him. And I'm still seeing two man fronts where the defensive lineman is lined up so far apart from each other. It's like um, there's no chance of stopping the run. You're asking not only Jordan Brooks, but Cody Barton to take on blockers, immediately shed them and make the tackle, which they can't do. Cody Barton really can't do it. And I'm just seeing you standing there on the sideline with some dumb look on your face. I'm talking to you, Pete. I'm talking to you, Clint Hurt. And you're watching your defense get completely physically manhandled. And I see nothing. I see no interest in trying to do something different, saying, okay, third and two. We probably should have three down linemen on the field at least. No, no, we're going, we're going with two. But it's not even that. Okay, we got players all across this defense getting bullied physically on a one, in a mano a mano situation. How many times did a Carolina player with the ball run into a Seahawks defender and pick up an extra two or three yards because he ran over the guy? And it's just like he's holding on for dear life to bring him down. Extra yards, missed tackles, just outright missed tackles. Sometimes you don't even bring the guy down after... Uh, the extra two, three yards. Sometimes he's getting an extra 10 because you missed the tackle. I thought Jordan Brooks was an abomination today, honestly. I don't know what PFF is going to say, but to me, Jordan Brooks was atrocious today. Barton was probably a little bit better, but he's not good enough to play with two down linemen like this. He's not. So I don't know why we keep asking him to do that stuff when it's clear <clears throat> it's not happening. So... That, that's a disaster. The um, the whole, the honestly, like even even the guys who I've been backing all, this whole year, Uchenna Nwosu, I thought played way out of control today. Woolen, he gave up the one fluky catch, but he missed several tackles today. He had the face mask. And the game was basically over. I'm not mad about that. Uchenna had a face, had I think a horse collar. It was kind of a weak call. So... There's really nothing on this defense other than Irvin and Taylor that I can talk up in any way. Brian Monet, who again, we extended in the offseason. I saw him get bullied frequently. In that situation, he needs to be your run-stuffing nose tackle, and it's not happening. He needs to eat up multiple blockers every play. And by the end of that game, when he was the guy we were leaning on, Carolina ran the same play over and over and over until they got into the end zone. So, yeah, we're back to square one with this defense because uh, I, I don't know what happened during that one really good month where we were the best defense in football. I have no idea, but that is so far out the door at this point. It's not even funny. And exactly what I was afraid of happening happened in this game where you were so ineffective against the run. You gave up so much on the ground. Darnold never had to do anything to beat you, really. He only had to make a handful of throws. I think he had, what, 120... Hold on, let me make sure I get this right here. Yeah, he had 120 passing yards today. 105 net. And he never had to do any more than that. He could still beat your ass because you're just you're you're just watching these running backs run you over. So that that's the part of this game that's really just sickening. The offense had problems, but at least there's some stuff I can hang my hat on. It's hard to find anything to hang your hat on with this defense after this game. 
So, yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, what are Pete and Clint and to a certain extent Desai? I know he doesn't, I know he's just the in week uh, game plan creator. And who knows how much he's actually doing right now anyway. But I'm, I'm just wondering, what what are you doing during this game when you're watching this happen? And you're just like, you don't realize that this is all Carolina wants to do. It wasn't until the end of the game when it was basically over. You're down 10 points. Carolina's driving. You finally just decided, okay, screw it. We're putting eight, nine in the box and selling out to stop the run. If they get off a big play touchdown, then so be it. We're just going to challenge them to um, run into a loaded box. And that worked too little too late. You should have been doing that the whole second half. If Sam Darnold hits a big throw to beat you, then good for him. But I'd rather take that chance than take the chance of... It's it's not even taking a chance. It's just watching yourself get blown off the ball and blown off the field on every running play. So disaster of a coaching job in this game. Um, punting on fourth down with seven minutes left down 10. Honestly, like, I, obviously I'm recording this before the postgame pressers, but I'm genuinely interested to hear Pete justify that. That is one of the most objectively bad decisions that I've ever seen this team make under Carroll. And I've seen some bad ones. Like there's nothing to debate on that one. That's just a terrible decision. And sure enough, Carolina shoot five minutes off the clock and kicked a field goal. And by the time you got the ball back, it was, it was basically garbage time. So brilliant. Yeah. Um, I I've said a lot of nice things about Carroll this year, but man, he, he's uh, giving me good incentive to just take it all back. Like the, there are some things on this team that look good for in terms of the way it's being built, big picture, but you still got to have something better than a historically bad defense out there. You're playing the Carolina Panthers at home. They just flew 3,000 plus miles. You got to do better than 30 points, no turnovers, and what, whatever they got, 200 yards rushing. Just a disaster all around. And I'm sure Pete's embarrassed about this. I'm sure he's going to try to figure out what to do here. But uh, the time to figure that stuff out should have been after the Bucks game, the Raiders game, the Rams game. And now here we are. And by the time you start making these adjustments, is it going to be too late? Because I'll say it right now, 49ers are kicking our teeth in on Thursday night. Like, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm, I'm going to watch it because I, I feel obligated to. But I have zero reason to believe this team can... There, is there anything they can do to stop the run? Is there anything that this team is capable of doing that will allow them to at least stop the run and give themselves a chance? All right. I uh, I don't know where we go from here. Obviously, at the moment, we're still in the playoffs. I don't think anything can change that because the Giants lost. Washington's not playing this week. But uh, we are getting to the point now where I'm, I'm sorry. It has to be said. Who cares about the playoffs? If we get in, somebody's just going to run for 300 yards on us and we're going to lose by three touchdowns. That's what it feels like right now. I mean, I'll always take the playoff spot if it's there, especially because we did all that work to get in position to be in the playoffs uh, during this season. I'm not interested in throwing a season away to chase a slightly higher draft pick. I don't, I don't do that, especially here, not in this spot. But I do ask myself, like, Okay, you make the playoffs. You play the Vikings in the first round. Dalvin Cook has 250 on you late in the fourth. You're down by three, four touchdowns because you can't get off the field. And it's like, wow, that was worth it. That's how it's starting to feel. So, yeah. It, and look, it, it it's not Geno. It's, Geno's not the reason. I always thought this year, okay, probably not going to be that good. But it's going to be because Gino's the reason. And guess what? Gino probably won't be here the next year. But no, that, that's not what it is. Now it's this defense. It's Pete. It's Clint. These are guys who are probably going to be here next year. And I can understand this defense being bad, but they're historically bad at this point. And it's also predictable, too. Panthers just run, 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 run the ball 40 times in this game, knowing that it's going to, the dam's going to break and you've got nothing. So yeah, shout out to the receivers, shout out to uh, the tackles. I thought they both are, they all played really well. 
Um, only the one drop by uh, Metcalf. He's got like four or five drops this year, which is not a number of drops that I really care about. But yeah, um, we're we're back. We're back to the old stuff, man. I'm looking at Pete, and I'm going, no, you're you're not good enough. This was a disaster of a month of football coaching for you. And yes, I know the players are deeply flawed. I know the players kind of suck. But these are your players. You wanted these players, man. With the exception of a guy like Miles Adams, who I don't think he pl even played hardly today. He played a little bit, to my recollection, but I didn't see him that much. And these other guys, like I said, you brought them in here. I know it's not everything you wanted, but you got to do a little bit better than this. So, Carol, we're back. We're back to the old stuff. Get out of town. If this is the best you can do at home in a pivotal game for your playoff chances, beat it. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks.